Okay, today is. Let me see. I had this ready, of course. Wednesday, February. Wednesday, February 24, 2010. The Bible reading for the day is Numbers. 31 through 32. I hope I'm getting this right. I hope I'm on schedule here. Anyways, um, yesterday, we're going to, oh, and we're going to have to do yesterday's too, which was numbers 29 through 30, so today, or 28 through 30, so today we have numbers 28 through 32. Um, I didn't do yesterday's because it was really nothing much, but, um, 2829 was uh, just again the rituals of these feasts and these offerings. And then 30 got into um, some weird stuff. Again, um, women aren't able to fully control their own body. Uh, it says here if a woman. At all times, when a woman makes a vow, she's under, um, she's still under the authority of either her husband, or if she's not married yet, of course, her father. Now, women were not allowed to, were not really capable of getting out on their own because they were under subjugation of their their father um, until they were married. Then they were under subjugation of their husband. So, I'm sure all, if they did end up making any type of profit, the profit, I would assume, went to the father or the husband, but the wife was supposed to be uh, the sex slave of her husband and was not supposed to be wanting to go out and make money or whatever now. I guess if the father died or if the husband died, then that put the woman in a real pickle because she had no skills and um, she might have children by then. Uh, what is she to do? And non-virgin females, virgin males, they can whore, nails could whore around all they want with, with impunity. But women were prized for their virginity and then after they were married, they were prized for their child son making ability, even though they have no control over what the sex of their child will be. So anyways, I um, have to go on that rant again. Uh, it says here in chapter 30 that if a woman makes a pledge to the Lord, why she would make a pledge to the Lord, I don't know. But if she made a pledge to the Lord and she's under the, you know, if she's still living at her father's house, um, then her father can void the pledge. Um, if she makes a vow in, under and she's married, and then her husband can nullify the vow. Um, I don't know, again, I don't know what it would be in, for the woman to make a vow to God, because God, God only blesses men. Like if a woman makes a vow to the Lord, just like Hagar, if she went back to Abraham and Abram and Sarai, then um, her male heirs would get... Um, blessings, not her. She would have to put up with all the rape and the violence, other violence, and her male offspring would benefit. Not her female offspring, not her. Her male offspring would benefit for listening to God. The rapist dickhead. Okay, um, now in chapter 31, uh, the Lord said to go uh, genocide all the Midianites. Now, in my footnotes, it says it wasn't all the Midianites. I think this is like um, damage control. 
my footnotes in the New American Bible says, well, it wasn't all the Midianites. It was just the Midianites around the tribe of, that were settled around, ah, uh, near the tribe of the Jews. Uh, still genocide. So, anyways, they're trying to soften the blow here of, of God in his Hitlerish ways. But anyway, so they go and they kill um, everything. And they bring back uh, the, what they call the spoils, what they used to call the spoils. Um, they took all the well, here they're saying they took all the booty, the people with beasts they had, with the people and the beasts they had captured and brought the captives together with the spoils of the booty. And then Moses got mad. He's like, um, so you have spared all the women. Why? are why They are the very ones on Balaam's advice prompted the unfaithfulness of the Israelites toward the Lord in the Peor affair, which began the slaughter of the Lord's community. Um, nope. The women were not the reason for the men's sin. And so then it says, um, this is chapter, uh, chapter 31, verse 17. Here's where the, um, the footnote here says, it was only against those Midianites that were dwelling near the encampment of the Israelites. Even if that was true, which it's not, but even if that was true, it's still genocide. Slay therefore every male child and every woman who has had intercourse with a man. But you may spare and keep for yourselves all the girls who had no intercourse with a man. So they can be your rape slaves. Um, that last part I added myself. Um... Are you still holding on to this? You've listened to all these videos, if you've listened to all these videos. Are you still holding on to this Bible as being the Word of God? And if you, and if this is anything to do with God, um, don't you think God's a dick? Uh, yeah, I know Moses said. Now you're saying, well, Moses. It was Moses this time. Well, the stuff about female virginity and rape and harem and inheritance, that was all by, that was supposedly by God. All them rules about female, men being able to whore around, but females being killed for having sex outside of marriage. That, that's from God. Um, the laws about only men being able to inherit. Uh, land, property, anything. That was from God. Women being spoils of war. That started with God. Moses was just... Moses was just putting into effect the laws made by God. So anyways, um... I think that's really the only thing. I mean, it's, it says, you know, something about purification. Who cares about that? I mean, we're talking about sex slavery. And, and the apology, Christian apologists would say, well, isn't it better that they um, kept these women alive instead of killing them? Well, first thing, um, sex slavery... Probably a lot, any type of slavery, but especially sex slavery in a society where the the gender divisions and misogyny was just so great, of course, you know, against the person who is the sex, you know, the gender of the person who is a sex slave. Um, 
I would say a lot of people might um, in instead want to die. I'm sure there was a lot of suicides and sex slavery, in slavery, too. But um, they'd probably rather be dead than live as a sex slave. Um, and just because it's better doesn't mean it's good. I mean, this is supposed to be a God who's a God who says, "Go genocide, go commit genocide against this one nation simply because they put a cur they wanted to put a curse on you." What would that have done anyways? Well, the curses are bogus nonsense. What would a curse have done anyways? And supposedly the Lord is so powerful that he can out he can overcome any curses. You know, he can outwit and curse from any other god. And we're st I'm still on the debate. It's like, do other gods exist? Because sometimes in the scripture it says other gods exist. Sometimes it says they are false gods. And what does false mean? They're inactive? What? And who made these gods? Like, God, like if God is a creator of everything, did God create these other gods? I mean, it's just, it's just utter nonsense. But, um... That I've never gotten true answers for. So, um, anyway, so if no other gods exist, no other, you know, other than in people's minds, then who cares if they made these um, curses against the, um, the Israelites? They have no power. And even if they did have a little power, if the gods, other gods existed... Isn't this God greater than those other gods? And can he just say, well, you know, I'm not going to allow that to happen. I'm greater than, you know, I'm more powerful than the other gods. Anyways, how did I get off on that tangent? I do remember I started out talking about how um, it's better to keep these virgins alive. Um, well, why not keep all the women alive then? Why not keep the non-virgin women alive? Right? Uh, the true reason is because women were valued for their virginity and their sun-making abilities. S-O-N, not S-U-N. Sun-making abilities. Um, these other women were garbage, you know, to them because they've had sex with men who weren't them, or a man who wasn't them. Um, I'm kind of wondering if maybe this started, okay, I heard some nonsense. You know, I'm wondering how this started, like, what does it matter if a woman had sex with another man? Um, I think this started with the ignorance of how reproduction worked, because back then they didn't know anything about reproduction. Nothing, 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 nothing. Um... Now, there is still some people who are really ignorant about uh, how reproduction um, and breeding world, do, do, at least dog breeding world, there are some breeders who think that if they have sex, they breed their, their female dog with a dog of um, a different breed, basically making a mixed breed or a mutt. Um, that that female dog is ruined for the rest of her life. She can't breathe. And from what I get, and I asked, um, it seems that they think that somehow that will taint the future offspring of that dog. Well, that shows a clear ignorance, complete ignorance of how sperm works. Um, yeah, there's, there's just no way, that's not, it's not even possible. Um, anyway, so I'm thinking maybe this was why the virginity of women got, got lost. You know, the, the reasons for the desire for virgin women's was a high priority. Maybe somewhere along the way it got lost, because usually it does. It got lost by now. It might have been lost by then. Maybe somehow they thought that the um, 
that the race of the previous um, sexual intercourses or you know sperm from the sexual previous sexual intercourses would mix with the current race and so then you'd have like you know what they used to call well mixed race babies what they call mixed race babies now and um so I don't know I'm thinking maybe that's what it was that's the only thing I can think of uh and you know somewhere uh, the reasoning behind it you, anyways the reasoning behind it got lost thousands of years ago um so I don't know really I'm starting to get kind of irritated about all this um really don't even want to read this crap anymore but uh, there really isn't there really isn't anything more against like every tiny little thing that the Israelites do against supposedly against God but typically for the betterment of themselves God gets mad um, this is just all war stuff. I'm really not interested in it. That's why I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, it's just one genocide. God's commanding one genocide after another. Um, who needs Hitler when he got God? Um, so anyways, that was my misogyny of the day. Really, there's so much misogyny in here that I'm kind of picking up on that um, and just leaving the rest because the rest is just like all what males do to males it's man on man uh, hate crimes and that's all this is is hate crimes uh, male to male hate crimes and I really don't care because the males set up the system to benefit themselves and um I know, you asked for it. But, uh, anyways, the what you're seeing there is a pattern that I'm selling on my uh, Bonanza, in my Bonanza booth. These are long, I guess you, you might have called them prairie skirts. Um, some of these you might, I don't know how offensive this is, but they used to call them gypsy skirts. But I know the word gypsy has been maligned and misused by the white man. Um, so I don't know if that's an offensive term, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. But they're like prairie skirts. That's a pattern for it. It's never done. The, uh, it's never been cut. See if I can get that. Oh. Sorry, had a boo boo there. Um, yeah, it's never been cut. It still has the instructions. You know, this, these types are the ones where you have like a little crinoline underlay there. Some of them have that. Some of them don't. You know, this one looks like a full. Oh, no, I think it's just high-waisted. I don't know if you can see that. Anyways, uh, this is a bow. This is, a, I'll, if I remember, I'll put my um, Bonanza link in the description. 